welcome to my channel if this is your first time welcome back if you've been before lovely to have you either way on this channel we talk books and today i am filming a vlog um it's not friday <laughs> it's wednesday um but i'm home from work uh and i have been all week i have a i won't give you the gory details but i have an infected cyst and uh, it has been causing a lot of pain, so I've been on some pretty hefty pain medication, um, but it is now responding to medication and I am, it is going down, so anyway, I'm still home from work. I am going to go back to work tomorrow, um, but I am trying to be good about my energy today and um, to just really uh, keep it simple and calm <laughs> because otherwise I am not going to have the energy I need to do my day at work tomorrow. So um, with that in mind I thought today would be a good day to do um, have a reading day um, because I'm not going to be going out of the house, I'm not going to be doing crazy amounts of chores or anything like that, just kind of keeping it low key. <laughs> so um, I did do some reading yesterday and I've sort of been kind of making some plans and thinking about, um, you know, what I want to do moving forward. So, yeah, uh, I thought I'd just take you along with my reading today. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about the books that I'm, I've currently got on the go. Okay, so I've got a couple of books on the go, as I always do, because that's just the way I like to read. Um, so I thought what I would do today is just tell you about three books that I've got happening at the moment um, because they're the ones that I'm going to try and make some progress on. So the first I'm going to tell you about is a book I've had on the go for a long time <laughs> and that is Femina um, by Janina Ramirez. Um, as I picked this book up from my shelf the bookmark fell out so I am going to have to double check. Actually let's do that now. Let's double check and see on Storygraph where I am up to. Okay, so I'm on page 222, um, and double check how many pages this is, is, 333. So I've got just over 100 pages to go of this book. Um, it's a non-fiction book that's all about um, women uh, from, from the Middle Ages and sort of uh, looking at the historical records to kind of um, learn more about, uh, you know, women who have sort of been written out of the history they haven't been included in the in the sort of historians um things before so we've got new evidence coming to light about um different women um and uh it's changing our view of of history and this is sort of like i guess it's like a pop history so it's not super academic um uh, so yeah it's accessible but i've had this book on the go for a really long time i put it aside um, because I was reading, I needed to read something similar that I was doing for a buddy read last year, and then I took a long time to come back to it. So I would like to make some progress on this today, if not finish it, um, because it would be nice to get this one done this month. Um, so that's the non-fiction book that I'm going to have on the go today. Uh, so the fiction book that I've got uh, on the go at the moment is To Shape a Dragon's Breath, by Moni Quill, Black Goose. This is a fantasy book um, and it's all about a young girl called Anikus who is, um, uh, she is a sort of marginal, from a marginalised people um, and they live on a small island but they are, um, they sort of pay their taxes to, uh, in this book they call, who they call the Anglish um, and there are some beautiful uh, maps. There's a beautiful map at the beginning. Thank goodness also a pronunciation guide <laughs> that is very very helpful uh, because there are a lot of character names and place names and just words in the language that are uh, would be very difficult for me to pronounce up without that guide. So um, yeah that has been, I've, I've sort of just started that yesterday and I'm up to page 29 um, so I'm a couple of chapters in. Uh, this is a book that has 
511 pages. So I do not think I'm going to finish this one today, no chance. Um, but I would like to make a little bit of progress on it because I want to try and keep chipping away at it um, as much as possible. This is a book I'm reading for a book club. Um, although I did check in yesterday and I can see that only one other person from the book club on Storygraph because we're doing using the new read along feature. Um, so only one other person that's joined the read along has made a start on this book. So um, I'm not behind, <laughs> even though this was technically our pick for February. Um, obviously, not everybody is up to it yet. So that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, that gives me a bit more time to get it done. Uh, so that is my fiction physical book that I've got on the go. And my audio book that I've got on the go is called Eden by Jim Crace. Um, I am listening to this in an app that is very bad. <laughs> it's a bad app. Um, so it's the app is called Indie Reads. And it's, I think, the State Library, or maybe um, maybe it is the National Library in Australia that have, I don't know if they've created this app. It's not a great app because they don't have good tracking options for the books that you're um, listening to. Anyway, uh, I'm on chapter four of 19 chapters in Eden by Jim Crace. Um, let me see if you, can you see the, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but zoom in. That's the bar, that's the little bar, um, to show you how far along I am. So I'm not at the halfway point. So that's the audiobook I've got going at the moment. Um, so that one is all about, um, uh, it's set in the Garden of Eden many years after the fall. So many years after Adam and Eve and the... There are gardeners in the garden and there are angels and there are animals. And uh, we are following um, one character who uh, his sort of like very close friend um, just escaped the garden. Um, and uh, there's also an angel with a broken wing because they sort of disobeyed they were too curious about the outside and they ended up getting a broken wing because of that. So um, it's sort of like looking at the Garden of Eden from a different perspective, I guess, than the kind of standard uh, sort of biblical story. Um, you know, so yes, it's a paradise, but you're trapped there. <laughs> so, um, you know, technically you can leave whatever you want, but like this sort of like... Um, the pressure to remain because it's like, you know, you have everything you need here. So why would you want to look elsewhere? Um, so it's sort of looking at that kind of balance between, um, you know, having good things, but also needing freedom and choice. Um, so yeah, it's interesting so far and I'm enjoying it. So that's the audio book that I've got on the go at the moment. So those are the three books that I'm going to be reading um, today. I think. I don't think I'm going to start anything new. Um, but yeah, that's that's where we're at <laughs> um, with, our, with our reading today. So uh, how is the day going to play out? I am still in my pyjamas um, and I definitely need to have a shower this morning um, so that I can clean my wound and um, get goo out of it <laughs> and then redress it for the day um, but do that from a point of being very clean uh, so I'm going to do that I'm going to have a shower uh, and then I'm going to get into the reading and I'll take you along with my day um, and yeah we'll see how we do um, before I do go and have my shower though I got a parcel this morning which I thought I would show you so I'm my day job is that I'm a teacher which is where I should be today um, but yeah we, we do what we have to, we've got to let our bodies heal. Um, and I just ordered some new teacher stamps and they arrived today. I've, I opened this out of the parcel that came in, but I haven't opened the inside parcel. So I've got this from a company called The Teaching Tools. Um, and it comes in this gorgeous box. Look at that. So pretty. Um, so let's open it up. 
and I'll show you the stamps I got. Okay, we've got this one that says, you knocked my socks off. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so what I might do is I might stamp these all on a page. It's got a little picture of socks. Uh, this one says Superstar and it's a cute little um, uh, starfish. And oh, this is the one that I, this is the reason I did the order in the first place. Um, they have a little series based on the Hungry Caterpillar and they had a cute, cute one saying incredible work, hungry for more with a picture of the caterpillar on. And I think this is the last one. Oh yeah, this is um, from their series with Philip Bunting. Actually, the Starfish one is as well, um, who is an author and illustrator here in Australia who does brilliant work. Um, and it says fant uh, fantastic, and the ant part of fantastic is underlined. And it's a cute little picture of an ant. So those are the my new stamps. I think that's everything. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll stamp those on a page for you so you can see what they look like because they're super cute um, and I need to go back to work so that I don't have so much time to sit here ordering things on my phone. Actually that's the other reason why we're going to do lots of reading today is to stop me from ordering more stuff on my phone. So <laughs> let's go have a shower. I'm not going to take you to that um, and then let's get some reading done and I will report back as the day goes on and bring you along with anything else that's happening today. Showered now, clean air, feeling better. Um, more mail has arrived. <laughs> it's, I think, book mail. So let's do a little, little check and see. Yes, it is. Very exciting. Ah, yes. Okay. So the dictionary people, um, which has just been long listed for the Women's Prize for Nonfiction. Uh, so it had been on my wish list for a little while and when I heard the long list, I just decided to buy it. So here it is, very exciting. And uh, another one that I just heard about uh, and it was on Simon's channel, which I'll link down below. Um, and that's this one, Cecily, um, wife, mother, politician, traitor, fighter, survivor. Uh, and I think this was a video that he was filming with his mum, so I'll link her channel down below as well. Uh, yeah, and they were talking about this one, I, it just sounded really interesting, and when I checked the price was good, so I just decided to impulse buy it. Uh, so, yeah, Cecily, very exciting. Um, yeah, so I'm now going to sit and do a bit of reading and get myself a snack first, um, because I am already kind of tired it's like it's such a weird thing when you're not well um especially when your body is fighting an infection and i was talking to the doctor about this um and which is part of the reason why i'm not at work <laughs> it's because um you know when your body's fighting a an infection you just get so tired like because it you know your body's behind the scenes kind of working really hard <laughs> to make you well so um yeah i'm already tired just from having a shower <laughs> um so i'm gonna just keep resting uh i'm gonna do a bit of reading and then i will catch up with you and let you know how i'm going Hello, I've got Charlie who is not typically, I actually don't know if she's ever been in one of my videos before. Our other cat Xanthi is often there and I don't know if you can hear her purring, but she's right next to my ear and it's very loud. <laughs> okay, I'm um, checking in a tiny bit later than I anticipated because um, I went to turn the camera on before and the battery had died. <laughs> I let, I let it sit idle for too long, uh, not recording anything, so anyway, had to pop it on the charge. Uh, I've been reading quite prodigiously, um, so let me check in with the books that I've been reading. So 
I'm up to now, I just finished page 100 in this one, um, To Shape a Dragon's Breath. Uh, this is really enjoyable. I'm really enjoying it so far. So I can't remember if I actually gave you a proper kind of overview of what the story was about at the beginning. I feel like I got distracted and didn't. Um, so essentially we've got a girl who is, um, you know, about 14, 15, and she comes from a marginalised community within this world, which is similar to a sort of old-fashioned regular world, uh, except there are dragons, and um, she, uh, her community has not had, they used to have dragons, they haven't had one for a very long time um, in their midst, and via some circumstances, a dragon comes to them and chooses her um, to be its companion. Uh, so she then, as part of this world, uh, the rules are you have to go, um, you have to report that you have a dragon and then you have to have the person who uh, has been selected by the dragon has to go to school basically and learn how to do that properly. Um, and as you can imagine, um, so she's sort of like a, I would say like a First Nations uh, kind of character. Um, and obviously there are ways that her community would have previously dealt with all of this before they were under the control of the majority rule from outside um, uh, and now they are required she's now kind of a fish out of water in this kind of majority situation and having to learn at a at the school that is really different to the ways that her community normally educate people so it's sort of it's really interesting. So she's just arrived at the school and she's had had the tour um, and she's about to go and meet her classmate who is the only other girl as well at this school. Um, so that's an interesting kind of thing and I'm enjoying it a lot so far. Um, the writing is really good uh, and the... I'm, I'm enjoying the plot of it. I definitely want to hop back to this, but I stopped to have some lunch and I listened to a chapter from my audio book, um, Eden by Jim Crace. Uh, that is also really interesting. I'm really enjoying that one as well. Um, and this chapter, we got more of the perspective of, uh, again, did I give you a good synopsis of this book? When I was talking about it, I probably didn't. So let me tell you about that one now. Um, <laughs> so this book is all about, um, it's set in the Eden. I think I told you that much at the beginning. And we have, uh, at the beginning of the book, we find out that, so there's, there are gardeners, there are angels, there are animals. One of the gardeners has, or laborers has gone missing from, from Eden, um, a woman and, her sort of partner we've heard from we've heard from uh, a sort of informant gardener character who's kind of like an in-between between the angels and the and the um, laborers um, who sort of thinks quite highly of himself he's very much being painted as a baddie here and then uh, we hadn't yet heard from the woman um, and this last chapter we heard from both the angel with the broken wing, who is sort of like a, is an angel, but is not quite on the same level as the other angels because of this broken wing situation that occurred because he went outside the garden when he wasn't supposed to. And um, then also uh, we've now just heard from the woman herself. So she hasn't, it, so it's kind of like going back to, the day before and the day before kind of thing and we're hearing more context and learning more about what's happened in um in the situation and it's sort of like a mystery that's like unfolding which i'm really enjoying as well um i've also been reading a little bit now so after after lunch i read um a bit of femina um i'm now up to page 243 243. Um, so this chapter has been about the, I don't know how to say it, is it Cathar? C-A-T-H-A-R-S? Cathars? 
cathars. Anyway, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but um, it's a group of people who were around sort of in, uh, I think at this point we're talking about the 13th century, I want to say. I might be wrong about that. Um, and they were sort of a, a sect that was um, uh, sort of had different beliefs to the Catholic Church and the Pope at the time ended up uh, sort of sending knights on crusade to there rather than to the Holy Land, which hadn't been going particularly well. Um, and so it it's sort of painted as a land grab as well and, you know, property grab um, on the part of the knights. That's how they were sort of convinced to get involved because it's expensive going on, on crusade. Um, so... Obviously, if you captured a, um, a heretic, uh, then they they had to give all all of their property over. Um, so, yeah, that was that was a really interesting chapter. And it, uh, sorry, it's it's still ongoing. I haven't finished the chapter, um, but it's talking about women and kind of how their role um, in the Cathar Church was very different to what um, could be expected if they were part of just the Catholic Church where they had to be entirely subservient and they're saying in this you know they don't know for sure and they're a mixed kind of uh, you know maybe it wasn't consistent across all groups but it seemed as though women could have more power within the Cathar Church so that they're wondering if that's why um, having a little grooming session back here um wondering if that's why women were so attracted to what would have been quite a dangerous sect to be part of because eventually they ended up being hunted down by by the knights on um, crusade because they were heretics so yeah it was really interesting and then it sort of also kind of went into as well how that's kind of impacted more modern times so for example talking about the nazis and treasure hunting the holy grail um and then also talking about the da vinci code so that's interesting um and how that was uh sort of influenced by um a fraudulent document that was uh deposited in the french bibliothèque nationale in the late 1960s um and yeah that that's really interesting. So that's to do with an arg an argument that tied a bloodline of Jesus and Mary Magdalene to a secret sect in the Languedoc re region of France. The Cathars were, were cited as protectors of the Grail. Um, so yeah, like that's interesting how that kind of has impacted our more modern culture as well. So yeah, I'm I'm finding this book really fascinating, and it's as I've been reading it. Oh, I'm almost finished the chapter. I didn't realize there was only page and a bit left um but yeah like it's interesting how it kind of uh, you know i i'm picked up this book and i find it really fascinating and then i'm just annoyed at myself for having left it for so long because i've all but forgotten a lot of the other stuff that's gone on i'm sure with a flick through it would be okay um so yeah it's, it's a really interesting book although i will say you know it is relying on pretty scant records because often and, and realistically that is clear from the subtitle of the book it's saying a new history of the middle ages through the women written out of it so they are kind of going off scant records and you know new finds and so on but um yeah it's so often you know they're kind of the the author janina ramirez is kind of going to um, there's a bit of speculation in there, but then that there's also her kind of focusing on the bits that we do know, um, which are much more male heavy. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting how it's kind of going back and forth, but I, like, this is an aspect of history that I don't know a lot about. Like I know a little bit about it, but not a lot. So it's interesting to me anyway. Um, but yeah, we're kind of, each chapter is going to be focusing on, uh, different groups of people so let's have a look and see what's next so I'm um, just about up to chapter seven um, and that type that chapter is titled kings and diplomats 
Um, and it looks as though we're heading to Poland in the next um, the next chapter, which is something I don't know heaps about. So I'm sure it will be interesting and I'll be learning things that I didn't already know. So should be good. So that's Femina. So yeah, I'm, I'm making good progress today on my books. Um, I didn't film making my lunch because I just had sandwiches. So I didn't think that would be very interesting to, um, <laughs> to show you me making a cheese and tomato sandwich. Um, so I didn't, but it was, it was filling in a nice way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to keep reading. I think I am getting a tiny bit tired and I don't know whether that's just my brain kind of having a moment in the afternoon because my body's still, um, you know, actively fighting an infection. Uh, I've had a little bit of pain in the, in the area of the cyst, which is under my arm. Um, so it's in a really inconvenient and sore place. So yeah, <laughs> um, we may need to have a, have a little lie down. We'll see. But if so, I might just pop the my audio book back on and do another chapter. But lie down while I'm listening to it. And hopefully not fall asleep. <laughs> I'll check back in when I've got something new to report to you or to show you. So, hello. <laughs> um, I just, because I'm going to make, I'm making a second pot of tea for today. It's definitely a two pot day today. Um, so this morning I made this tea, which is the Deluxe South Coast Breakfast from the Berry Tea Shop. Berry is um, on the south coast of New South Wales, which is a place I, I don't, don't stay in Berry, but I pass through Berry, um, and I now make a point of popping to the shop to stock up on my tea. Um, so that's what I did on my last holiday. Popped in um, today. Now that was also today. That was earlier today. Now I'm making um, this tea, uh, which is called. I grabbed out the box because. I've got it in a caddy at the moment. So it's called Bushfire Breakfast and it's from a company called Love Loose Leaf Tea. Um, and these guys are now based in the ACT, the Australian Capital Territory. They used to be based in Ulladulla and then Milton, which is down the south coast, which is how I um, came, across, came across them. And uh, then the business has been bought by a lady that lives in the ACT. So now um, that's where that's where they're based. Um, and this is sort of like a really typical Billy tea. Um, so Billy teas are a little bit smoky, hence bushfire. Um, when it was owned by the previous people, it was called Australian Bushfire Breakfast. Um, but I think they changed the name because they don't only use Australian products now. So it's just called Bushfire Breakfast. Um, it's got some imported ingredients as well. Um, so yeah, 50% Australian grown, 50% premium imported. So I've just got that in at the moment in the teapot. And I also just wanted to show you my cute caddy, which I think is very cute. Um, and also the little spoon I have in this one, because this is kind of like my main tea. So my uncle made this when he was at school um, and my uncle is, so it's my dad's brother and he is older than my dad um, and my dad is in his 60s now so he, that uncle is probably 70, yes I think actually he might have had his 70th 
um, not too long ago. Uh, so he made this. Um, the reason I have it is because it was the spoon that my grandfather always used in his pots of tea, in his tea caddy that he had. And when he passed away, this was literally the only thing I wanted <laughs> to remind me of him. So every time I make a, a pot of tea using this spoon to scoop it out, I think about him. And it's the best, the best thing I ever could have gotten um, as a reminder of somebody who I loved very dearly. So yeah, this is, I just wanted to show it to you because I also think it's really cool. And I was always fascinated by this spoon. It's not a standard measure, let's be clear, but it's the one that I use. <laughs> so that's my tea. Um, my tea story for today. That is the tea on the tea. Okay, let's pour. <laughs> now, I know this is sacrilege. My grandfather always used to spin his teapot three times. My dad does it six times. And I do not. Um, also, I, um, I don't spin it at all. I just let it sort of work and this is sort of how I make sure that I've got nice hot tea for longer than I could get through this entire pot without it going to tanniny um, is I pour my cup and then I pour the rest into uh, a sort of insulated bottle um, and it keeps pretty hot for quite a while. Uh, if I don't touch it, it'll keep till like tomorrow, um, but I am going to be touching it, so it won't keep quite that long, um, but that's okay because I'm going to drink it. Um, so this is a, the bottle is the brand um, Decor, can you see that? You probably can't, Decor, um, and this is the one litre bottle which I find is more than enough from it and this is a six pot teapot so it's plenty plenty and look which little menace has stolen my chair while I've been making tea how rude I have to disturb this nap now Ah, it is now night time, as you can probably tell from the lighting change. Charlie is back napping again, uh, which we love. Um, the double feature <laughs> in this video. Um, so I had a bit of a... This, yeah. I pushed myself a little bit too hard. I was tidying up an area out the back of the house in preparation because I would like to do a puzzle and I haven't done a puzzle for about a month since I got back from my holiday where we were doing puzzles galore and I hadn't set it all back up again there was a bunch of stuff on the table and I pushed myself a little bit too hard and got really exhausted <laughs> um, so obviously my body is still working through some stuff um, so I have sort of taken a little bit of a break um, my husband's home from work he's gone out for his walk and um, I'm just going to take this opportunity to do a quick little update to let you know where we're up to. So, um, I think at the last update, the no change here, I was up to page 100, if that's still the same. Um, so, in uh, she's gone to school, she's had her little tour, and um, yeah... She's sort of anticipating meeting more students. She's met one student so far. Uh, this one, I read, I'm now up to page 279. So I've read chapter seven, which I have not yet spoken to you about. So I will let you know about that. Um, this was a really interesting chapter. chapter. So it was uh, all about a king who was a woman in Poland uh, and her name was so she's known as Hedwig Hedwig um, but 
she also has another name. Uh, now, if I were reading this and I didn't know that it was a Polish word, I would say Jadwiga, but I think it would be more likely to be Jadwiga. Jadwiga. If you know for sure, please let me know down in the comments. Um, and she was made a saint uh, in, during the time of John Paul II, the Pope. Um, but she was a king because her father, who had been the previous king, had made provision for his daughters to be, because he didn't have any sons, I guess. Um, so he made provision when he died for them to be known as kings as opposed to queens and so that was the case um and so she the author janina ramirez was looking at some of the artifacts that are associated with um yadviga or Hed hedwig and um yeah she just seemed like a really interesting character um who had a really interesting story that and then ended up sort of being written out of some of her major accomplishments like she put all the work into establish a university um or re-establish a university donating a lot of her personal effects and so on um to the university after she died and because she died just before it opened her husband's name is on the university instead of hers even though he had very little to do with it which is crazy to me <laughs> um so yeah just such an interesting um, chapter of history, I guess, just to know about this, uh, this woman who was the king of Poland, um, and is now a saint, uh, who I didn't know anything about. I'm, I'm not Catholic, so I guess that's probably part of the reason I, I've never heard of, of this person, but yeah. So I've actually only got two chapters to go now of Femina. Um, so the next chapter is called Entrepreneurs and Influencers. And we are back in England for this chapter. And then we have one more chapter after that, which is oop, called Exceptional and Outcast. Let me just find the start of that chapter so I can tell you what country we're in. Uh, da -da -da. Now this may not be looking at a specific person because we're not in a country at the very beginning of the chapter. I will say, and this is something that I've heard as a criticism of this book, this is a very Eurocentric book. Um, and I guess part of that is probably to do with like what uh, evidence is available to the author to, to include. Um, but also... You know, I'm sure there would be some things further afield. Like I would have liked to have seen more, maybe some stuff from Asia because, yeah. And actually now I'm going to have to think back and think, were there any Asian ones? There may have been. But I think mostly we're just in Europe. So, yeah, I'm just flicking back now and I can't really... Re recall, even though I did start this book back in May last year, um, I can't recall there being anybody in here who is not European. So I don't know whether that's just because that was the focus of this author, just in terms of her own research. Um, but yeah, it just sort of feels like I'm sure there were other women in other locations that were we have some stuff about. But maybe we don't. I don't know. It's not my area of expertise. Anyway, I am enjoying this book um, and learning about, especially given that we've gone to a few countries that I don't know as much about. Like I'm a bit more familiar with English history, for example. Not entirely, but to, to a higher degree than, for example, Polish history, because it's just not um, on my radar. So yeah, it's been good reading this book. So uh, what am I going to do now for the rest of this evening? I am thinking that I will make a start on a puzzle. Um, I'm probably not going to film that because the part of the house where I've set up to do the puzzle is really messy and I don't want you to know about that. 
but I want you to see it with your eyeballs. <laughs> um, so I probably won't film that. If I do, it'll be an extreme close-up of the puzzle um, so that you can't see the background. Um, this is how I am editing my life. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get to see the very messy bits of my house. Um, but yeah, I'm possibly gonna do a bit of puzzle. So if I do that, I will potentially read another chapter or two from the audiobook um, from Eden. Um, but I will report back to you. And Charlie may or may not be involved in the reporting back, but uh, we'll report back to you and let you know how we've gone this evening, if we've added anything more um, to the reading time. Um, and then we'll do a sort of check-in on the completion, what we've gotten, what the, the achievements of today have been. Prophecy. He is as helpless as a pigeon to the angel's peregrine. He does what no servant ever should when faced with fury of this kind. Some of the other angels have come forward from their loft just to see what damage has been done, as he has so recently thought possible. She's committed a great profanity and has slipped outside into the world somehow and has done so without warning. Masters and their lord by not acknowledging Alan's presence when he was burying the jack an afternoon ago. Getting tired going to be heading to bed shortly so I thought I'd just quickly come on and wrap up um, what I've gotten done in the interim since my last update. So I've made uh, no further progress on my two physical books but I did listen to um, my audiobook Eden by Jim Grace um, and I am now up to chapter seven. I'm part way through chapter seven and I'm just going to stop there for the day. Um, and when I plugged in, when I did my calculations, because this app is not particularly helpful, when I plugged everything in, um, it looks like I'm at about 36% um, of the way through the book. So that was a, some good progress today um, on that one. Uh, Femina, let me just check where we, where we started. Uh, so let me grab my page. So, Femina, Femina, where are you there? So I started on page 222, and I am now up to 279. Um, so good progress there. And for this one, we started on page 29, and I'm now on page 100. So great progress on all three of my books. I'm pleased with what I was able to get done today. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will catch you on the next one. I'm going to bed now.